As the name applies, a no-flap landing is a landing conducted with no flaps. A no-flap landing is a type of landing pilots must practice to prepare for a flap malfunction. This can be caused by a failed flap motor or when an electrical malfunction, such as an alternator failure, occurs. In Epic Flight Academy's Cessna 172s, once the main battery is dead, the aircraft's electrical system is powered by the standby battery. The standby battery only powers what is found on the essential bus, which does not include the flaps. Another time when pilots may land with no flaps is in gusty conditions. To conduct the no-flap landing, first, the pilot must ensure the descent and before landing checklists are completed. Then, the pilot should begin their approach to the assigned or desired runway. While approaching the runway, the pilot must visually check the windsock to obtain the latest wind information. If in the traffic pattern, once the pilot has abeamed the touchdown point, they reduce the aircraft's power to approximately 1300 RPMs and establish an 85 knots indicated airspeed descent. Note: This power setting is approximately 200 RPMs less than the normal power setting of 1500 RPMs and is necessary due to the lack of drag normally produced by extended flaps on normal landings. The pilot then commences a turn to the base leg when they are approximately 45 degrees from the approach end of the runway, unless otherwise dictated by traffic or air traffic control. Pilots can confirm this by looking over their shoulder nearest the runway and confirming the approach end of the runway is 45 degrees behind their shoulder. They then make the appropriate traffic advisory calls if at an uncontrolled airport. On the base leg, the pilot must coordinate the pitch and power of the aircraft to continue descending at approximately 75 knots indicated airspeed, while maintaining the desired approach angle. Before turning to final, the pilot must visually clear the final approach path prior to commencing the turn, and then conduct a turn to rollout on final with the aircraft aligned with the landing runway's center line. If at an uncontrolled airport, the pilot makes the appropriate traffic advisory calls. Once on the final approach, the pilot coordinates the pitch and power to maintain the desired airspeed of 70 knots indicated airspeed, and if needed, add half the gust factor if landing in gusting conditions while maintaining an appropriate approach path angle. During a no-flap approach, the pitch attitude will be closer to level or flatter than during a full-flap approach. This is due to the change in cord line. When the pilot is about 300 feet above ground level on final approach, they stabilize the airplane on the extended center line. As the pilot crosses the runway threshold, they enter ground effect and begin their round out by smoothly reducing the power to idle and bringing the aircraft's nose to a level flight attitude. As the aircraft begins to sink towards the runway surface, the pilot raises the nose of the aircraft and flares the same way they would when landing with flaps. Just like landing with flaps, the pilot flares to make the main landing gear settle on the runway surface first. After the main landing gear has contacted the runway, the pilot maintains elevator back pressure throughout the landing roll to keep the nose wheel off the runway as long as possible for maximum aerodynamic braking. Before leaving the runway centerline, the pilot must slow the airplane to normal taxi speed using brakes as necessary. Once the airplane is clear of the active runway and stopped, the pilot performs the after landing checklist. Some helpful tips when conducting no flap landings are Use a lower power setting as the aircraft does not have as much drag as when landing with flaps. When landing with no flaps, the descent to the runway will be shallower and will require a slightly higher reference speed than with flaps. This is because flaps help pilots generate more lift while flying at slower air speeds causing a steeper descent to the runway. If approaching too fast, use back elevator pressure to slightly pitch up and slow the aircraft and adjust the power to continue descending to the runway. Do not force the aircraft down to the runway before the aircraft is ready to land. This can cause the aircraft to bounce on the runway surface. Instead, maintain back elevator pressure until the aircraft slows down and the main landing gear touches down. Then maintain the necessary back elevator pressure to keep the nose wheel off the ground. Keeping the nose wheel off the ground as long as possible allows the pilot to use aerodynamic braking by putting the aircraft's weight on the main landing gear. The ACS standards for a no-flap landing are as follows. A no-flap approach and landing is not an explicit maneuver required to be demonstrated on the private pilot or commercial checkride. 
But many designated pilot examiners require demonstrations of a no-flap approach and landing to demonstrate landing with systems and equipment malfunctions outlined in the appropriate airman certification standards. The following will be used as the general guideline. Maintain an approach airspeed of plus 10 or minus 5 knots and touch down within the first one-third of runway for private pilot applicants. Maintain an approach airspeed of plus or minus 5 knots and touch down within the first one-third of runway for commercial pilot applicants. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.